in earlier chapter we have studied about the pattern of inheritance which was explained to us by Gregor Mendel. In this chapter we are going to learn about the molecular basis of genes. DNA has some qualities which is it can help in continuity of the existence of life and so that the DNA must be chemically stable so that it can be easily passed on from one generation to another. Second, it also must have ability to express its characteristics when it replicates. It, uh, it must provide all the features or characters which are required for change in order for perspective evolution. There were many experiments carried on to prove that DNA was actually the genetic material. First it was believed that protein was genetic material but then we will see in this chapter by various experiments that actually it was proved that genetic material is made up of DNA. Many experiments was carried out for identifying genetic material. Then Frederick Griffith came. He was a British physician who used bacterium called as Diplococcus pneumoniae which was known to cause pneumonia in mammals. Now what Mr. Frederick Griffith did, he took two strains of bacteria. One was S-type which was smooth type, it has a capsule around it, a covering around it. Second was R-type also known as rough type which was non-capsulated or it showed absence of protective covering around it. Then first he took the S type bacteria injected in mice observed it, the mice died. It showed that the S type is virulent or is pathogenic and lead and caused the mice to contract pneumonia. Secondly he injected S type bacteria into mice. The mice lived. That concluded that the R type is a virulent or is non pathogenic. It doesn't cause pneumonia into the mice. Then there was sudden changes made into the experiment. The living S type bacteria was heated and the capsule got dissolved. That bacteria was injected into the mice. The mice lived. The question arises how did the mice live? Then he said, let us do one more experiment. He took R type bacteria the previous one with the capsule he did it whatever the strain he got now he added some bacteria in it and then injected it in the mice what happened was of surprise the mice died what is the factor actually which caused the mice to die that the s type transferred something to r type bacteria which actually caused the r type or the virulent type bacteria to cause pneumonia to the mice and so the mice died. What was this something called? This something was later on named as DNA which actually caused the R-type bacteria to be to turn pathogenic. So see how simple transfer of gene can change the characteristics of entire working process. Avery McLeod and McCarthy experiment after Griffith passed on the, his theory that gen, DNA is a genetic material, Avery, McLeod and McCarthy came to prove the concrete solution that whether Griffith was right or not. So what they did, they took the S-type strain and they purified RNA, they purified DNA. RNA proteins and all other related materials then they took these materials and separately treated them with enzymes such as RNA A's, protease DNA is all are having subscript A that means they are enzymes. They mix this, these materials 
which was derived from S type, killed S type strain and mixed it with R strain as you can see here and observe the results. When they mixed RNAs with that material, they got S and R strain. So that was no problem. Then when they mixed protease, again S and R strain was observed. But when they mixed DNA, these enzymes, then only R strain was obtained. That means something consumed the S strain in it. That was so. This proved that that R S type was consumed by DNA, DNA is because whatever the medicine it works, it works upon only the target area. So target of DNA is was DNA. So that's all what what it did. When they tra treated it with lipase, again they got SNR strain. Ta when treated with carboase, again they got SNR strain. So this provided the result that DNA is or that material which is leading the strain to become pathogenic is something which is passed on and that something is known as DNA. Then came Hershey Chase. They used to work in the lab with viruses that actually infect bacteria, bacteriophages to the exact, which are actually composed of DNA and protein. Now they both were in, in quest that whether the genetic material was actually because of DNA or was it because of protein. So they carried on their experiment. Let us see about their experiment, what it was. Now what Hershey Chase did, they used isotopes of phosphorus which was also called as P32 and isotope of sulfur which was named as S35. They infected bacteriophages with both of these type of isotopes of phosphor, uh, phosphorus and sulfur. We know, we already know that phosphorus is already present in DNA. DNA contains phosphorus and it doesn't have sulfur. So that means it doesn't have sulfur. Then protein has sulfur but it doesn't have phosphorus. So they thought let us infect both of these type of viruses into bacteriophages and let us see how the infections occur and what do we find after centrifugation. Once when the centrifugation was done, after the infection blending was done, then in centrifugation they got that in the centrifuge or the material which was left, the viruses had phosphorus or DNA and not sulfur. That means that sulfur or protein doesn't get transferred it is not the one which is responsible for genetic material, but DNA is. After they carried on their experiment, they actually came into the concrete conclusion that protein did not enter the cell or infect the cell, but DNA did. And so, from, from then onwards, DNA was known to be the genetic material. Now we know that genes are actually units of inheritance and the gene is actually a segment of DNA which provides information. However, it also can do various functions. So, our next scientist or the next person you must know is Seymour Benzer who introduced to us the terms cistron, muton and recon. In, in modern concept of genes, we have different segments of DNA which have different functions. First being cistron, which is also known as unit of function. It performs the function of carrying, which is responsible for different traits or expression. For example, it can hold for hairs, for anything which can be coded. It also has information about protein synthesis and when uh, the DNA segment must code for protein synthesis. Basically it can be of length 200 base pairs. 
so it is such a long segment and so that's why it can perform these various functions. Mutron, also known as unit of mutation. Let us know what are their functions. Actually, now when the DNA was known to be the genetic material, its basic shape or the qualities or the characteristics of what performed the functions it performed was unknown. So, Frederick Meischer, what he did, he separated cellular substance from nuclei of first cells and named it as nuclein. Since this substance which he ex extract had acidic properties so he named it as nucleic acid and further on this nucleic acid was known to be of two types de deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid DNA or RNA each DNA is known to be have three parts sugar phosphate group and nitrogen bases sugar can be of two types ribose sugar or deoxyribose sugar. RNA has ribose sugar whereas DNA has deoxyribose sugar. You can see the figure displayed. Phosphate group also the structure has been displayed. Let us know about what are nitrogen bases. Now after Frederick Meischer, James Watson and Francis Crick, they actually proposed the DNA structure which is whatever is known to us today based on results by studying X-ray crystallographic studies and so thanks to them that we know the exact shape and dimension of DNA. According to Watson and Crick, what they proposed that the model of DNA is double helix, helical structure which is very super coiled around each other. As you can see in the diagram itself, it has sugar phosphate backbone attached which is at the end of the rungs and uh, nitrogen bases which are complementary to each other and uh, it, is, uh, based, it is aligned on the central axis which is exactly passing from the center so it looks like a twisted ladder or a helix in structure of each strand uh, what they said uh, is as seen earlier the rungs in the ladder are composed of nitrogen bases which are complementary to each other that means the nucleotides which are attached and the strand is aligned or uh, goes into direction of pi dash to 3 dash n and it is in the, in the front of the second the second strand is actually going in direction of pi dash to 3 dash n so they are both aligned in opposite direction and this is what makes them anti-parallel from each other purine pyrimidine ratio or complementary base pairing we already know that purines will always bind to pyrimidines that means A will always bind to hymene or uracil and G will always bind to cytosine however adenine and guanine who are known as purines they are double <coughs> double ring structure wherever hymene and cytosine are single ring structure these were the, the relation of ratio of binding of purines to pyrimidine is, is of exactly 1 is to 1 ratio that means how much adenine and guanine are present that many only Thymine and cytosine will be present. So that makes sense that they are equally present on the strands and so the ratio becomes A since they are equal so A plus G upon 
t plus c becomes 1 this is the ratio which is also known as chargoff's rule in polarity of the strands both the strands are said earlier in anti parallel nature of the strand that one strand goes in 5 dash to 3 dash direction whereas the second strand goes in uh, 3 dash to 5 dash or opposite so it is anti parallel and so this is the polarity of <coughs> the strands in dna which makes them anti parallel to each other the coiling of anti parallel strands is occurs in right hand side direction and this coiling of dna strand in right hand side direction often creates grooves some are uh, some are small and some are major so the small grooves are known as minor grooves whereas the major grooves or bigger grooves are known as major grooves as you can see here it is simplified or magnified here you can see how minor grooves are smaller and major grooves the, uh, the distance between the these um, turns are larger dimensions of dna dimensions of dna involves uh, the various dimensions or the measures of dna strand see the distance between this one complete turn make the distance of 3.4 nanometer it is so small in nanometer not even in meter there are 10 base pairs comprising in one spiral turn so you can imagine how much smaller a super coil the structure is the diameter of dna molecule is in total of 2.37 or 2.2 point something nanometer in exact so it is so complex structure